in the um, first reading of this bill. And I have to say how the worm turns, how the worm turns, because I was in the last parliament under, lay, under a Labour-led government where we had this very same debate about youth minimum wages and, and National voted against it. So it's really pleasing to know that National has seen the error of the ways, that they've actually accepted that what Labor was saying about youth minimum wages being discriminatory, about not having any impact, not having any impact to, on youth employment, uh, is, was accurate, actually, because, I mean, what we've seen with the figures is, makes no difference. Uh, you know, we can argue about the research, you know, and the member will argue about that, but actually it's, uh, it's, it's just simply the fact is that if you are working, it shouldn't matter if you're young, if you're Māori, if you're woman, whatever, if you're doing a job, you should be paid a decent wage for what you do. Now, this bill, Mr Speaker, seeks to return young workers to the scrap heap of the youth minimum wage. And as I said, this is not a new argument for this parliament, and the arguments that the member puts have well, well rehearsed, and I know the member wasn't here last parliament, and we went through them, but they were rejected. They were rejected. We went through a select committee process. We, we heard from all sorts of people, all kinds of people, and actually the arguments were rejected because there was no evidence, Mr Speaker, no evidence that increasing uh, youth minimum wages or young, pe young people's uh, wages has any impact on employment, um, just as there's no evidence uh, about whether uh, increasing the wages of women uh, have any impact on, on wages. And I think there are uh, arguments that we've seen in the past from that. And I don't want to be disrespectful to the member, you know, I'm, I'm welcome back to the parliament, but I do have to ask him, is this what he really came back to parliament to do? Is this what he really came back to Parliament to do? Because I think, I think that's a little bit, um, uh, you know, I'll be, interest, I'll be interested to hear a response from that. Because, no, you know, the last time, I mean, we had, well, we had debates in the last Parliament, but no one can remember what life was like in the 1980s when that member was in Parliament. No one can remember it, actually. But many of the people that are being, oh, you can, you can remember it. But actually, many of, the, many of the young workers that are affected by this bill tonight weren't even born then, weren't even born when that member was last in Parliament. And I'm sure that he's genuinely concerned about youth unemployment, as is everyone. But I think his economic arguments just don't stack up. I think we've moved past the economic rationalist arguments that we've seen uh, from the Business Roundtable and from his supporters. And if we look at the record of what's happened in the previous Labor government with the youth minimum wages. We removed uh, the youth minimum wage. Can I um, apologise to an old member? I've yep. actually rung the bell two minutes prior to the end of her time. I do apologise. She still has two minutes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, when we moved the adult, we progressively removed, uh, moved the adult minimum wage. I mean, when we came into, into government in 1999, the, adult, well, the youth minimum wage applied to people, to young people, under 20, under 20. I mean, many of those people, you know, were not only holding up a job but had families and had other responsibilities. We progressively moved it, and there's been significant increases. But during that period, youth unemployment kept falling, as did the uh, unemployment for all workers, and, and everybody knows that the Labor government uh, moved the minimum, minimum wage significantly. So, Mr Speaker... I think we can all, you know, we can all, you know, come up with research on it, but I think we've had enough time now in this parliament to know, and certainly the National Party is acknowledging that, we've had enough time to know that moving the minimum wage is actually not having the impact that the member suggests on young workers. And I mean, you know, I know the ACT Party position is that there shouldn't be any minimum wage, it actually should be left up to the market. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, I ask the member to correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I understand where, they've, uh, where they're still at. And I think, for me, it just comes down to some simple things. If we look back in our history, there was a time at the beginning of the century when we discriminated against Māori workers. They got paid less than Pākehā workers. And there was a time, actually, up until the early 1970s, where women were paid less than the minimum wage than men. Now, is anyone... Could anyone imagine that we would ever go back to that, that sort of discrimination? Would we ever do that? So we can't discriminate on the basis of, of um, gender and of race. But 
can we, can we discriminate on the basis of age? Well, the members proposing we should. Should we discriminate on the, on the basis of being older? Thank you, Mr Speaker. Order. Gareth Hughes.